Hello everybody, this is Miles Luigi, and welcome back to my Jet Set Radio Jet Rank with Pots Run, where we actually are in Chapter 2 of this game. The game is split up into three chapters. The first chapter and the third chapter takes place in Tokyo. To, which is obviously, you know, modeled after Tokyo with Shibuya-cho, Kogani-cho, and Benton-cho as the sub-areas in Tokyo To. And Chapter 2 takes place here in... Well, there's two areas. There's this area called Bantam Street and another area called Grind Square, and it's modeled after New York, although the game doesn't explicitly say it's modeled after New York. It's pretty obvious to tell. Actually, another one of the telltale signs that this is modeled after New York. This game was made in 2000 originally when it was released on the Dreamcast. And if you look in the background, you can actually see in the uh, skybox the Twin Towers. Interesting. Anyway, uh... This level, um, I, the video is titled Bantam Street, the actual name of the mission is called Tag or Die, but the thing is when you're playing through the game, this is supposed to be a flashback, and you actually only have access to two characters at the time, and the game doesn't even tell you what the name of the mission is, you just, you're like, okay, I'm in Bantam Street now, so that this level is usually better known as Bantam Street instead of Tag or Die, so that's why I titled it Bantam Street. The level itself, I mean, just like every other level in the game, we want to take care of the big tags, the small tags, but it's definitely true in this level. A lot of the three-stroke and seven-stroke graffitis are over on this side of the level, and, uh, where, you know, there's a whole bunch of, you know, tagging spots up on the roof. The other side of the level, which is on the left here, is a park. Now, there's a lot of spray cans in the park. If you look in the park, but there's actually <laughs> all the graffiti spots are single-stroke graffiti spots, and... You know, if we take care of those, that'll actually get to the next tier response, which actually I should quit saying next tier response. Gosh darn it. Um, because it's actually an assassin who's going to be coming after us, and the assassin that appears in this level is actually a very mobile assassin. Some of the assassins later on aren't very uh, mobile. This one is pretty mobile. He also has a whip. <laughs> He's also, I guess you could say, pretty cool. The first eggs I am taking care of are on this side of the level, the very, very right side of the level. This other side of the level is actually kind of sort of boring. It almost feels like an afterthought. I mean, this this level it did only appear in the U.S. and the Japanese versions of the game, but still, it, this it could have used more, more. I guess it's more interesting when the assassin's on your ass, but I don't know why I jumped for that. I knew, I, I know I cannot make that jump. I don't know why I jumped for that. That was a dumb dumb jump. Anyway, this building over here is really, really useful. Now, there is a grind rail on the middle of the stairs, and in the Dreamcast version of the game, you can grind up that. However, if you try grinding up that in the PC port of the game, you will just kind of sort of fall off the rail. I mean, you could still slightly grind up it, but then you fall off, and it's like, oh, what's the point? Because it was a really fast way to get up the stairs, and now that you can't do that anymore. Golly darn it. But, uh... As I said before, there's a whole lot of cans in the park. The only other source of cans is in between all these signs. And thankfully, in between all these signs, this leads to a really, really good chance for me to try to be fancy and jump between the signs. And jumping between the signs, this is something that actually takes a little bit of skill. You have to, you know, get yourself on the wall, time your jumps right, and of course I decide to be even more fancy and go back and forth. That's worth a lot of points, by the way. <laughs> that really helps. I already knew this mission was probably going to take me a while, my time was probably going to get pretty low, so I definitely wanted to make sure I was going as fancy as I possibly can. So by the way, taking that earlier with that single stroke did not help my score whatsoever. But uh, before the assassin comes, there's actually two three-stroke graffitis on the street, and these two three-stroke graffitis are annoying. You'll see why. So I start spraying the first one, no big deal. Alright, now watch what happens when I start spraying the second one over here. I start spraying it, and all of a sudden these assholes appear out of nowhere. Every time I've played through this level, those assholes appear out of nowhere. And you want to know why they're assholes? It's not, no big deal. Spray it, run away, you might get hit by one. One of the achievements in this game that I have yet to to get, and I may have mentioned this earlier, I apologize if I did, it's an achievement you get for completing this game without ever having anyone latch onto you. Now, holy shit, that is that annoying to do. I mean, if I put enough patience into doing it and didn't do stupid stuff like that, I could probably get it, but I, I just haven't had the patience to get that achievement in layman's terms. I'd rather get jet rank with pots than get that stupid an achievement. And it's because of tags like that one three-stroke tag right there where there's always an assassin on your ass or a member of the Golden Rhinos on your ass. I suppose I should say we're no longer dealing with the police force. Uh, the regular mooks there with the knives, they act like the police force, but they're actually the Golden Rhinos. I suppose I should say that right now. Uh, the ones that have the knives, matter of fact, one of them should be coming up here right now. There they act kind of like the police. Fun fact here, I know what I'm doing. 
Um, whenever you're spraying a very large graffiti, like the seven store graffitis, well, that's a very large graffiti, um, your character will start in the middle, then go to the left and right, but the thing is she's going to, he or she kind of teleports, like, to the left or right, so if someone's on you, then all of a sudden, you you finish your stroke, you appear on the other side of the tag, you just kind of sort of teleport there, so you saw that Asanas, and he was running back and forth after me. You could never get me, because I knew what I was doing, that was pretty fun. So, the Assassin is here, and this Assassin's blind, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that happened, that is funny. <laughs> oh, that's most of the takes. Quit trying to be stylish, Miles Luigi. You missed the jump because of it. But, uh, the Golden Rhinos, there's those regular mooks, then there's also ones with uh, the Uzis that try to shoot you, and then here come the assassins. And that's in the case of the assassin, this one's pretty mobile. He also says, hello, child. He should actually be saying, like, hello, dog, or hello, puppy dog, or... Hello, mischievous potter, you meddling dog. <laughs> meddling kids and the dog. <laughs> I guess that's what you call the GGs. That's the name of the game you're playing as, by the way, the GGs. I don't think I've ever mentioned it. Those meddling kids and that dog. There we go. So now we're at the park, and as you can see, there's a whole ton of cans to pick up in the park, but seeing as I'm playing as pots, those are almost entirely useless. I can only carry seven. If I was playing as one of the characters that can carry more cans, that actually might be of use, but not of use this time. Well, on the bright side, the park is a really, really good place to pull off lots of cool tricks. <laughs> it's also funny when the uh, assassin isn't here, there's a whole bunch of people there, and if you're running all over the place, they're all like, like slow down and Whoa! get out of the way. <laughs> it's funny, when we were in Tokyo Tau, they were all making, uh, I guess, <laughs> noises people in Tokyo would make, but here the people are like, wow, you're rude, get out of the way, ah! and stuff like that, and they actually are, are talking more in English. Just a neat little touch the game did. They, they could have reused assets, but no, they didn't. They had got a whole bunch of people to record new lines of a dog running at them. And I deserve that. So, if you ever get hooked onto somebody like this, A, you failed at achievement. B, get on a grind reel, and they'll get right off of you. That is useful advice to know in your Jet Set Radio lexicon. So, uh, there's a couple of single stroke graffitis that I have to jump off the wall to get like that one. Did I get the other one yet? Okay, good, I did. So I just have one last graffiti to get, and I specifically saved this one for last, because even though it is a seven-stroke graffiti, none of the assassins nor any of the Golden Rhino members are able to make it to you in this spot. <laughs> the only thing that can hit you is the train, and provided you're not an idiot, the train will not hit you. Um, I believe I mentioned before, to turn around, you have to press back and forth on the control stick, and then sometimes when I do that, I don't turn around, and then when I end up doing it, I end up doing it multiple times in a row, as shown here. But as long as the train isn't coming, I am absolutely free to spray this graffiti to my heart's content, which I do. So, that has been Bantam Street, or Tag or Die. This has been Miles Luigi. See you for the next level.